All right, Jason, what's happening, my friend? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Excited to be here with you today, and uh, we'll just get started. We're excited about this album coming out. Why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about it? Yeah, so uh, so this is my 10th studio album, and um, you know, for this album, we were just trying to figure out how to do something maybe a little different than, than we had done on, on the previous nine records, um, and we didn't really know what that was, and, and so we kind of started recording this album during the uh, during the quarantine process, and which kind of gave us a lot of time, and, and we just went in and started recording and, and just kept recording and, and uh, ended up with all these songs that we, we wanted to put on an album, and so we decided to to do a double album and, and, um, and kind of do it a little different, you know, put some, put some live tracks on, on the previous, you know, from the previous nine albums and, and just kind of top all the albums into this one record. And, uh, also with 20 new songs. And, and so it, it kind of just became this thing that we were just kind of figuring it out as we went. And, uh, and then when it came time to drop it, we decided that, you know, instead of dropping 30 songs on everybody at once, we'll just drop half now and we'll drop another half in, in a few months and kind of give everybody time to process all the songs on the record. And, and uh, you know, I named it Making Georgia, which is my hometown and, and kind of where, where, you know, the music bug and all those things kind of started for me. It's where I learned how to play music and, and be a entertainer and um, all those kind of things. So it was like paying tribute to, to where it all started for me, too. That's great. Well, um, we're here in the north and central Florida area, Ocala Villages, Gainesville, Go Gators. Am I allowed to say Go Gators? You could say it, but I, you know, hey, I got a, I got a lot of family. I got to give a shout out to all my family down there in Ocala. I, uh, I got a lot of family down there. I used to play, I actually used to play Gainesville a lot before I had my record deal and I was, uh, had my band in Georgia. We would come down and play a bar down there called DJ Chaps back in the day, if anybody remembers that. So oh, uh, we do. Yeah. We do. Oh, yeah. We were just talking about it the other day. <laughs> yeah, I had a band called Jason Aldean and the Young Guns. We used to come in there, I don't know, about once every six weeks and play that bar. Yeah, you guys were super popular. Um, you went from, you know, hometown guy to superstar. And just by pushing and pushing and pushing, we're excited about this album and uh, we love what we're seeing. But I got to I got to do a shout out to your wife, Brittany. Also, um, you two are hardcore entrepreneurs you're touring, you've got your music, you got the bourbon, you, you, you have your Nashville rooftop bar and she has her clothing line. I know you guys have kids on top of that. And I know how I juggle just my two and our couple of businesses. Uh, seriously, with all this music, you're, you're, you continue to grow and your, your music library that you just sold, who's helping you? I know your wife is number one, probably number one when you have coffee in the mornings, but who's, who's the guy in charge of helping you managing these financial decisions these are some big time moves you're doing here yeah well you know I mean it's something that um you know I've always kind of been interested in in that stuff and and you know and I, I knew you know kind of early on like what my brand was and, and where I wanted to take that um you know I, I think with the music business and the success we've had in, in music um it's it's opened up a lot of opportunities for us um and so, you know, for me, some of those are, are really good opportunities. Some are not so good. So I think it's it's really picking and choosing the things that you think are, you know, are going to work and the things that that maybe aren't and the things that are true to your brand, the things that aren't. And, um, you know, and, and I think it's surrounding yourself with a good team. I mean, my management, um, you know, on, on some of the music stuff, my management, uh, my manager is a, a guy that I, I lean on and talk to a lot about that stuff. I also have a business manager that, um, it's been with me for a long time that um, that I kind of talk to and bounce ideas off of. Um, and I've gone to them sometimes and said, hey, I want to do this. And they're like, well, I don't think that's a good idea. And I said, well, I do. So um, we got to figure it out. So, you know, it's it's that kind of thing. And it, but it's it's having a team, I think, in place that, um, you know, you can bounce ideas off of that are open minded to uh, to, to things that I want to do and and um, ultimately sort of let me lead the charge and just kind of guiding me when, when I need that guidance in, in a certain area, because I don't know everything about everything, but I know, I know a little bit about a lot of stuff. So, um, yeah. you know, and so it, 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 to me, you know, I, I feel like it's a, it's been a little bit of a, a team effort as far as that goes. And, and I've been able to surround myself with, with people that I trust. And, and I think that really kind of have my best interest in mind and, um, and so it, it's allowed me that once my wife kind of got her thing up and running and, and started branching out and doing her thing, um, 
you know, I can kind of be there for advice or, or whatever it may be and kind of help her with, with some of the things she's got going on. But she's she's pretty sharp, uh, got a pretty sharp business mind, too. So uh, she's she's doing great as well. And, you know, you just uh, just kind of roll with it. Yeah. Well, uh, I see you guys on Instagram, Facebook, social media like crazy. You two always look like you're having a ball, number one. And uh, I get what, what's in the forefront for you guys and the kiddos in the next you know, 15 to 20 years. Oh, well, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of a guy that just looks at today and maybe tomorrow, and then it's a little hard to look past tomorrow. But um, I say that that's actually not true. But, um, you know, I think for me, obviously, the music is, is kind of what drives everything else for me. So, um, you know, this is first and foremost, what I am as a musician and an entertainer. And I want to do that as long as, um, as long as people want to see it and hear it. And um, so, you know, I always say like when you're a musician, especially at at this level, it's kind of a life or gig. I mean, it's, it's something you kind of never really get out of You just, you may dial it back, but I don't think you ever really get out of it. So, you know, I think for us, I mean, we got um, young kids, we got, you know, our our job right now is I have one in college, one that's about to start high school. Uh, Britt and I have our two little ones that are four and five. They're going to start school here in the next couple of years. So, you know, the next 15 or 20 years is going to be raising those two. Um, you know, and I think for me, man, it's really just planning, you know, something I've been doing for a long time is just sort of planning in the music business. You never know. I mean, you could have a, a great five years and then it goes away. And so for me, it's always been kind of planning for that. And um, if it all went away tomorrow, knowing that uh, that I've set me and my family up to be able to like, you know, have a have a great life and and also one day when we're gone, knowing that I've, I've taken care of, of them and given them a great head start at life as well. And, uh, you know, that, that's kind of been my, my long-term plan for a long time. Yeah. Good, good. Well, you know, speaking of getting ready to retire, that's what we do for a living here, helping people plan for retirement. We have a huge following and they wanted to know for sure if you were going to be showing up in October to the country thunder florida you've done that before i think we're in i think it's in kissimmee are you going to be coming to that um i seem to remember seeing (laughs) something with that with that city on my uh on my schedule i believe but uh yeah i think uh, i think we're playing that this year for sure and um you know and i love i love coming down to florida it's uh I, i was born and raised in in macon georgia but my parents divorced when i was three and my dad lived in Florida the whole time I was growing up, you know, so I spent a lot of time basically every summer of my life down in Florida, um, you know, Titusville area, Miami, different places like that. And um, so, I, you know, we, whenever we play in Florida, that's, uh, you know, that's almost like a homecoming for me, too. And, um, you know, I, I love it down there. And uh, what's your fondest memory in Florida? Fondest. Uh, Fondest memory, uh, probably for me is just um, my dad used to live in Homestead, which is south. It's between Miami and the Keys. And, um, you know, in the summers when I would go down there and hang with my dad, it was like on the weekends, you know, we would he'd take the boat out. We'd go fishing. Like he was kind of teaching me to to uh, to offshore fish. And, and to me, that was probably the thing that, you know, I love the most about summers is just kind of being around the water, being on the beach or being in the boat. Uh, and even to this day, I mean, I have a house in Florida now that, you know, whenever summer rolls around, actually the beginning of May, I'm headed to our house in, in Florida to spend uh, about a month down there just um, to kind of decompress a little bit before our tour starts. And uh, it's still to this day, it's just uh, when that time of year rolls around, it's just kind of my, my favorite place to be. Yeah, well, we're going to put your link up so all of our listeners and followers can download it and uh, get to know your songs. And as you know, in the Central Florida area, especially retirees or non-retirees, uh, we like the golf a lot. And a lot of country music's always coming on on these golf carts. So what is the, the song to jam out when we are golfing? Um, I would say the jam song on this record is probably uh, Small Town Small. Um you know, it's a song written by Brantley Gilbert and, and with all, the, you know, all the stuff kind of going on in, in, in our country these days. It's like, that's the song. When I heard it, I pointed to it. And I'm like, I want to say that. I want to say what that song is saying right there, because that's how I feel. And so um, for me, that's just one of if there's a song I really kind of want to crank a little bit, um, whether it be in in the truck or, or on a boat or whatever. It's like that's I think that's the one for me. 
That's the one. Okay. So last question. Okay. We have a little competition. You ever heard that song by Toby Keith, the blank golf game? We need you to write a song about golfing. Oh, well, first of all, I need to probably get better at golf. Um, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a very, very average golfer. It drives me crazy because I grew up playing baseball and I could hit a, hit a ball that was moving 90. That was, you know, like sinking and, and sliding and whatever, but I have a hard time hitting a ball that's sitting still. It drives me crazy. Well, I heard you were just playing with Trump. I heard he gave you some good tips. What, what was the best tip he gave you? Uh, well, Trump, Trump's, you know, he's that guy. He, he, uh, he instills a lot of confidence in you. Yeah. You know, he's like, Oh, you're a, you know, you're a five handicap. You, you know, you're so close. <laughs> you're so I mean, hell. He had me thinking like, you know, that I actually could join the PGA at some point if I put in some time. I mean, it was, but uh, he was so much fun and I really enjoyed hanging out with him. And he's a great golfer too. Um, but yeah, he was just giving me some tips on putting and, and some things, I guess, that he, he saw. But uh, I'm a, like I said, I'm a former baseball player. So I'm, I'm the guy that wants to go out and see how far I can hit it. But, uh, you know, Trump doesn't hit it necessarily far, but he's straight. And I mean, he he uh, he put a spanking on me for sure. Got it. Hey, Jason, we appreciate your time. I know you got to get going. We can't wait to hear your your album. We'll see you here in Kissimmee if you're going to show up. And maybe I'll see you in the Keys. That's my hometown. Hey, I really love appreciate it. it. Yep. You take care. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.